Hi folks, welcome to Motorcycle Live at Birmingham, NEC. Let's pop in and find out what two-wheeled treats await for us in 2022. That was a bit of a tongue twister, wasn't it? Okay, so straight off in fifth place, I've always been drawn to the Kawasaki Sports Tourer. I love the lines, the looks, the size, and not to mention the speed. In fact, I think the Sports Tourer market is about to go huge again, possibly ahead of the adventure bike market. So whilst this has been around for a while, it's still one to look out for. So I'm on the Kawasaki stand, folks. Always love a bit of green, in keeping with the whole Irish theme and everything. And joining me is Ross from Kawasaki. Ross, one of the, gee, look at the size of him. Uh, Ross, one of the things uh, I love on this stand is the 1000 SX. Anything new for 22? It's not actually anything new fundamentally for 2022 for Ninja 1000 SX, no. Um, it still remains our top selling bike in, in the UK. We're hoping that that will continue. Uh, it's a really popular bike into 2022. Um, the only real fundamental change is colours, that's it. So there's new colour schemes for, for, the, for next year's models. Um, and we still have the same performance version, tourer version, and performance tourer version available. But fundamentally, still a qu quick as fucking machine. Uh, yes, very quick. Very quick. <laughs> very comfortable, great for touring, great for track, great all rounder. Thanks a million, Ross. All the best. All right, cheers. Moving on, and I've picked a great time to come over here, by the way. It's towards the end of the week, so most of the big crowds have gone away, so I can still drool without too many people staring at me. And in fourth place, for me anyway, I can never resist a blade, especially the 30th anniversary version of this CBR 1000 RRR. Honda have just told me there'll be a few technical updates for 2022, but in fairness, why change it when it works like this? I particularly love the fact that Honda have kept the same colour scheme on this as they had on the original. And there it is. That's my youth right there, encapsulated on a plinth. If the bike has this much presence at a show, can you imagine the presence it has on the road? But in fairness, you'll only ever realise its potential on a track. And in third place, I've chosen this heavyweight champion. This is the BMW R18 Transcontinental. It's absolutely stunning, especially close to the Universal. You could go away for a month on this thing, I mean, just look at the size of it. You can take the family with you as well. Clearly built to rival a Goldwing or a Harley, my feeling is that there is a limited market for this as it just screams, take me away on a transcontinental tour, which I'm sure it would do with gusto, but for everyday use I wouldn't think it ticks many boxes, but the level of comfort and style has to be admired, in fact the cockpit layout here is actually nicer than my car. So I'll carry on cruising and I'll carry on dreaming and I'll head over to reveal my second favourite bike of the show. Yes, I'm back on the Honda stand, and I wasn't expecting to be, as I hadn't come to see this bike at all, but this is a thing of beauty. There's also the 300L, but between the two, this one is blessed with the better looks. Even though both these bikes are dual sport, I'd rather keep this one for more road use, as there's a lot more plastic to crack when you're throwing it around through the fields. There's also a bigger tank on the rally, just to take you away on a journey. I'm hitting the headlines, of course, at the moment, because Itchy Boots has taken hers to Alaska. It's one of those rare bikes as well, which looks so much better than it looks on the internet when you're drooling over it. I'm frightened my bank account might be in trouble again. The two bikes have gained huge popularity and waiting lists are soaring worldwide. However, I suspect that's about to get even worse after Itchy Boots' latest escapade. Okay, time to reveal my favourite bike of the show. 
It is the Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR. I love the finish on the Speed and the Street Triple anyway, but the thing I've never been able to warm to is that contentious headlamp array over the years. Well, they've changed it completely this time and have given it a whole new look and also at the same time thrown it back into the Cafe Racer era with this new fairing. I've sat on this one and also the white version and initially the riding position just excites me. I can't wait to get one out for a test ride, but at this price I'm afraid that's where my journey might start and end. Well that's it for another year from Motorcycle Live here in Birmingham NEC. Hope you enjoyed that brief insight to the exhibition and also to my five favourite motorbikes. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV, over and out.